Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, Trackstar family. How are you? I miss you guys. Honestly, though, who do I think I am? Just not coming Wednesday, right? Rude. <laughs> I promise, though. I promise this was going to be worthwhile. And... Thank you for the now second anonymous person who decided to throw a little razzle-dazzle and instead of email me, they decided to DM me to see what I thought about a particular situation that has also applied to them through somebody they knew with the same situation. Hmm. So I know you guys are probably like, what are you talking about? First things first, I love you. And I'm sorry I didn't come on Wednesday. But to be fair, you'll understand why now. Because this episode just might branch into a cassette episode for the men and the women. Side A for the women, side B for the men. If you know, you know. Okay. For those of you who are listening for the very first time, welcome. If you like what you see so far, go ahead and hit the like button if you like. If you dislike, that's cool too. You can hit the dislike button. I'm not biased. And subscribe if you haven't already. Share if you care. Okay. We are growing slow but steady. Easy does it. You don't have to rush. Now, this topic, as you can see by the title, might be a bit of a heavy hitter. And you'll see towards the end of this episode, it may be a good idea to make cassette tape episodes. Mm -hmm. But before I actually go in as to why I decided to do today's content, Let's actually go ahead and read the DM, the anonymous DM. So, as follows, this person wanted to be anonymous, and I respect that. Okay, so the DM reads as follows. Hey, one track. Hi, anonymous. Okay. I'm sending you this video because I wanted to personally ask if you can somewhat talk about unequally yoked relationships. Whew. I know your channel speaks about all kinds of relationships, but I wanted to hone in on marriage and being equally yoked and carrying dead weight. The video explains how a man and woman got married. However, the man had a bit of a huge secret. He was $50,000 in the red and decided to marry a younger woman who was, for the most part, well off. After they got married, they bought a house together where her name is on the mortgage, but both their names were on the deed to the house. Soon after closing the deal on the house, the IRS came down on him saying that they now owe the $50,000. Of course, the marriage goes sour and divorce is coming. However, in order for her to be emancipated from the marriage, she must pay her soon-to-be ex-husband's debt of 50 k in order to proceed in the divorce arrangement. I know this is heavy, but I think as Christians, we don't talk enough about being equally yoked. Interested to hear your take on this. Thank you, Shayna. Thank you, Anonymous. Whew. Needless to say, when I actually watched said video, I won't post it on here because I don't have rights or anything and I don't want to get struck. If you'd like me to send this video, or anything, if you want to watch the video, um, I'm going to do my due diligence and try to repost it on my Instagram page. If you have access to my Instagram, awesome. If you don't, 
I can try to find another way to send it to you, to those who are inquiring. But what a question, what a topic. And yes, I do agree. I think not a lot of people are willing to explain in depth what unequally yoked actually means or how it applies. We just hear, for the most part, older generations, they tend to use it a lot and throw it around. And nobody ever really feels like they have the time to sit down and ask questions unjudged and get a full explanation of what that actually is and what it looks like. So I have taken the extra few days to do just that. You're welcome. (laughs) And thank you, Anonymous, for bringing this up because I'm sure there are many others who may be feeling like you, who maybe just want to be in the know. Maybe they've heard something so much to the point it sounds cliche, but still you can't fathom or wrap your mind around the intensity of why it's so important. You just feel that it is. So thank you again. And officially, This is the equally versus unequally yoked and carrying dead weight episode that concludes our friendship series. It's been one heck of a series, but we made it, y'all. We made it. Now, let's go in to my disclaimer. Warning, I am not a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist. I know, I know, I know some of you are like, Shay, hit me out though. I appreciate you. You be explaining the explains. And I'm here to tell you, as flattering as that is and humbling as that is, you should not take everything I say as Bible. This is just strictly, mostly my opinion, backed with a little bit of research. That's all. Okay. I'm not Ayanla. I'm not going to fix your life. Only God can do that. Amen? So, how do we start this? How do we begin to look into both the equally yoked and the dead weight? Like, how do we... Well, let's define what equally yoked means. What is that? Okay? What is equally yoked and what is the significance of this? Very important questions, right? Yoke? Equally yoked? No, I know when you hear the word yoke, you're probably going to think of egg yolk. We're not talking about eggs, okay? So what is the yoke part about? We understand equally right? But what is this yoke you're speaking of? I got y'all. A yoke is a cross piece that is securely fastened around the necks of two animals. Usually it's associated with oxen, but sometimes you can also use, let's say, horses, other types of cattle, okay, that are used to pull a plow or cart. And the design of it distributes force between animals requiring a sense of teamwork to move together, okay? So with this type of yoke, this cross piece, you really have no choice but to move together in what you'd call a lockstep, where it's so synchronized that if one animal or let's say in terms of people if one person steps outside of the rhythm of the synchronicity it throws everything off okay or simply in other words the highlight of this definition that should come to your head is that it requires teamwork, balance, and reciprocity. So being equally yoked 
means that like this cattle here, this oxen, you are able to work together to the point where your movements are the same. Everything for the most part is the same. And even if it's not, it still enables you, your opposites to work together. Okay. So being that I love how anonymous you put into perspective that I do cover different relationships. It's not just the intimate relationship I like to talk about on this channel. I talk about all of them because one track record really is getting down to the nitty gritty to not just understand the different relationships you may encounter around you, but your personal one as well. And it requires a lot of work. Those of you who have followed me from the very beginning understand that I always stress that we can't change people, okay? But we can change what we allow. And part of being equally yoked, we're going to go into that, but there's some things to note about equally yoked relationships, whether it be a friendship, an intimate relationship, a business partnership, etc. Okay. So let's go to the list I created of four things to note about equally yoked relationships. And this is more so of a list to show that maybe you guys aren't working together, such as the oxen that I showed you. Okay. Number one, if it is starting to feel one-sided, more than likely you're not moving towards the same goal or destination. Parents, are you in the chat? <laughs> Parents are probably going to understand this more than anybody else for the simple fact that one, you've once been a child, two, more than likely you have had a partner unless you've had in vitro and just, or the baster for the turkey. Um, <laughs> and three, you are raising or have raised a child or children. So you may understand the idea of partnership having certain relationships within your life where you can pick up almost instantaneously if things are one-sided, being if it's just for yourself, for your partner, or for your child, okay? How many times, especially for those who are parents in the chat, how many times have, let's say, you witnessed your child bring certain friends around them, or even bring them to your home. And maybe after a few visits, you may start to pick up on certain patterns that this alleged friend has with your child or children. And you notice, mm, you know, I raised such a nice child. I've, I've given them everything that I could possibly give them. But this particular friend isn't exactly like my child or my children. I feel like this child that they brought home may actually benefit more of my child being around them than vice versa. Are you starting to get my drift, parents? If you have to question the reciprocity or the balance between two people, yourself and another person, mm, more than likely you're not equally yoked or they are not equally yoked with either their friend, their lover, or whatever else, their business partner. It's, 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 they're not working in tandem. They're not, the synchronicity is not there, okay? Let's go to the next one. 
if you refrain from sharing, speaking freely on things, let's say spirituality, your morals and values, in fear of rejection or arguments, more than likely you're settling or you're persuaded to sacrifice your peace for quote unquote peace. Hmm. This is a lot to take in. Okay. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I feel that I actually may have to do a side A and side B cassette tape about stuff like this. Because... It's so important to talk about the targets between the sexes and how manipulation grows from silencing your perspective, silencing your beliefs, your morals, your values, in order to have a false sense of peace. Just to say you have somebody, just to say you have a friend, this isn't okay. You're not, you're not equally yoked. When it comes to having a relationship where both of you are able to carry weight and move together towards the same direction, you cannot silence what you believe in, in essence, who you really are to keep moving forward. In fact, if you do that, you're drifting apart. You're not growing together, you're growing apart. And I need some of y'all to understand that and come to terms with letting things go if it's not working. It's 2024, what, what are we stressing ourselves out about if we know things aren't working? You have the right to speak up about it at least. And I know sometimes it may be easier said than done, but this is the part where we got to get real with ourselves. Do I love me more than I love this person? Do I love God than me more than I love this person? Or am I playing? Hmm. Let's go to the next one. If you have the mindset of, I'm waiting for them to change or they'll come around. Folks, it's a dead giveaway. You're not moving together as one unit. You don't change people. God can. Whew, I'm triggered. <laughs> no, because I need y'all to understand this. If I can speak on just this alone, I think people don't even understand the power of witchcraft that is being played as we speak on the entire world right now, where people feel like they can access certain things, tap into your thoughts, study you, and legit hypnotize you into thinking or breadcrumbing you into thinking that there's some sense of false hope. Where temporarily, they'll give you what you want, but it always leads back to what they want. They don't feel the need to change, but they still don't want to let you go. Whether that be a friendship, an intimate relationship, a business partnership. I mean, let's look at different examples here. We even have the example that Anonymous sent in. Now, I don't know the backstory between these two people that got married, but here's the thing me personally, through my life experiences, I can honestly say when things weren't right that I didn't know about, God gave me the discernment to, it gave me a couple red flags to be like, sis, turn around, it's not worth it. 
I, I don't have the time to explain it to you right now. I might explain it in hindsight. I may not, but you need to trust me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that there may have been signs for this lady that her husband was a beggary, that he had no money. And there's no shade. It's hard times out here. But to be 50K in the hole and not let the person that you're about to be married to know seems a bit manipulative. Let's just call a spade a spade. You knew that marrying this young girl would be a come up for you. You didn't love her, clearly, because this was never a topic of conversation before y'all closed on the house, which you made sure your name was on the deed written with hers, but the mortgage was in her name? And I don't know enough backstory. Maybe he was the type of person where, because he was 50K deep, but she may have been well off, she wasn't questioning to see what can he do for me financially if she clearly got it. But this is also another example of being equally yoked. We're not just talking about spirituality here. We're talking about finances and not saying that she and he need to make the same kind of money, but y'all aren't even equally yoked to be honest and to be forthcoming about your situation since you married a stranger. You married a wolf in sheep's clothing and it cost you over 50K to fix it and get away from him. That's a very expensive mistake. It is. And women, if you're in, in the chat, if you're in the live chat, if you're on the replay, men too, I need you to understand that your worth is not tied to how much you make, but you do need to protect yourself financially, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It is very rough out here, dating-wise and marriage-wise. I can't imagine even, I don't know how long they were married, but I can't even imagine, let's say if I was married and recently got divorced, coming into a culture right now of dating and coming to this current cesspool. I actually feel worse for, for those who have been divorced and or are heading towards divorce and feel the need to date again and come to what the world is now as far as dating. It is scary out here. But I need y'all to understand, it is people that currently prey on your downfall. They are There are people that P-R-A-Y for you, and then there's people that P-R-E-Y on you. If you do not have some type of grounding in God's word to understand that his promises are yes and amen, and to understand about self-love and long-suffering, aka patience and waiting on God's time and not yours, you'll be susceptible to a lot of the world's garbage and evil. Okay, let's move on to number four, because I promised I wasn't going to preach. Why do I keep doing this? Shayna, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Who asked you? Okay, let me go to the next one. Carbs. Number four. Hmm. If your efforts to please this person, aka bend over backwards, seems useless and you never feel a sense of stability no matter how hard you try, run. AKA, this person might be a narcissist and nothing you do is ever good enough, but they want you to do everything for them. You are not equally yoked to a narcissist. You never will be. You never will be. And again, I am not a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist, but we got to call a spade a spade. If you see narcissistic tendencies, you got to run. 
And if I can say that every episode, I will. It is scary out here. The amount of people who decide to be in love, not for the sake of being in love, but for the sake of a come up, for the sake of I need a new source. They are vampires. They are here to suck you dry. No ditty. Okay? And this goes for men and women. You need to be careful. Okay? Let's move on to what dead weight is and the importance of it and why it's just so relevant. So what truly is dead weight? And where has this term come from? How do I ident- how, how do I identify dead weight, Shayna? What are you talking about? Okay. Well, I did some research. Some of this I already knew, but I didn't know how gross it gets. Okay. Prepare yourself. And now is probably where I put a disclaimer that this is definitely not for kids. Anybody under the age of 18 with parental discretion, it might be for like 13 and up. Okay. Parents just watch this first to see if it's okay for children. Okay. But here's what I found about, here's what I found when it comes to dead weight. Okay. So the term dead weight has gone back as far as the Roman Empire. Shana, what do you mean? Is is that old? Yes, it is. Let me tell you why. I'm going to give you a little backstory. So dead weight actually refers to a punishment for a condemned criminal. Okay, this was reserved for the worst offenders. Like, this was one of the punishments over being crucified. Like, this was the final boss, okay? And the worst offenders who got this punishment were literally sentenced to carry around dead weight. So, Shayna, what do you mean they're forced to carry around dead weight? Well, let me tell you. The criminal was forced to live out the remainder of their natural-born life while tied to a corpse, which would decay, and then the decay would then transfer to the offender over time. I paused on purpose. Eventually. They would slowly become sicker and sicker until they would smell and rot and then pass away along with the original corpse they were tied to. Is that not disgusting? Nah, like for real. Because like, let's... (sighs) Let me talk about that further for a little bit. So the Roman Empire was known for a lot of sick and cruel, unusual punishments when it came to offenders who broke the law. Now, as I just mentioned, crucifixion was one of them, hence JC. Thanks for doing that because you did it for me and everybody who's listening right now. That was just one of the most gruesome deaths as well because it also came aside from the lashings to your half dead, it also included mocking people spitting on you, all of that. And they leave you there purposely to be hung so that bystanders who walk along the path will see you. They purposely do that. Okay. Some of their other weird and unusual cruel punishments included offenders literally being placed in sacks to drown. Like, imagine they put you in, like, a burlap sack, right? And then 
it's it's already insult to injury to just throw you in water and watch you drown as you're bound. But then they'll throw live animals in there to attack you while you're drowning as well. The Romans are very shysty people. They're very gross. Okay, the ancient Romans are very gross. They are... Hmm. They're weird. They're weird. Okay? They're strange. Because why you had to do all of that? Was it really that necessary? Okay, back to the topic at hand. I just had to put a little pause break in that. Because I need y'all to understand that dead weight and carrying dead weight was literally about dead weight. But anyway, so how do we look at a person who is dead weight? Like, how can we define that? What does that look like? Well, A, a person who feels more like a burden than an asset. I'm sure we can all relate at whatever age you are right now. There have been people in your life that literally feel like this. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, put a one in the chat if you can relate and you have experienced a person like this in your life, whether it has been a friend, an intimate relationship, a business partner, aka a coworker, whoever. It could be a mom-in-law. It could be a father-in-law. Any of your in-laws who have made you feel like this. Maybe they were the type of person where you are such a positive, go-lucky person, or maybe you're not, but maybe you just seem to have it all together. And there's always that one person who comes along and it's like they're only there when they need something, when they need something from you, specifically from you. But they'll start off the conversation, oh, you know, how you been? I haven't seen you in real long. How, how are the kids? How's the husband? How's the wife? How's school? How's work? Da, 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 da. And then, boom, follows up with a question. Hey, um. I was wondering if you could help me out with something. I need to borrow something. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. <laughs> this person more than likely is not equally yoked with you to even deserve your time of day. And they're dead weight. There's nothing that solidifies an equally yoked relationship of any kind with a person who's always carrying more weight than the other, with cattle who's moving inches more than the other. Otherwise, if that was the case, one would choke in the little harness, right? One would choke in the yoke. I didn't even mean to rhyme, but one would choke in the yoke. How can you maintain any type of relationship if you're doing more than the other person or the other person is doing more than you? You're carrying dead weight. If that person is not moving in tandem with you towards your same goals, towards your same destination, you are carrying that dead weight if y'all are not moving together. Okay, let's go to B. A person who is dead weight can be defined as a person who may literally make you feel as if you're taking on more weight, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that manifest physically if not taken care of. Ladies, let's talk. <laughs> Men, let's talk. Have you ever, just, just an example I'm going to throw out top of my head. Have you ever had a friend? where they were in a relationship and throughout the course of their relationship, you could tell they were stressed out and unhappy, but reluctantly just would leave the person, go back to the person, leave the person, go back to the person, or maybe not. 
maybe they didn't always leave and come back. They stayed no matter what, as far as you knew. But you could see it in their body, especially in their face, that they were not living their best life with this person. Mm -hmm. Put a one in the chat if you can relate to having a friend, or maybe you were the friend who was in that relationship and others were beginning to see how miserable you were and the pain and the agony that showed in their body of how they really felt on the inside. Put a two in the chat if you've never been this person or you've legit just never had a friend in, in that predicament. And if you haven't, you're probably real young. I'm gonna be honest. Moment of silence for those who have been through traumatic relationships, whether it be a romantic relationship, a bad friendship, or a bad business partnership, or just having the worst time ever dealing with a coworker to the point you brought your work home with you, stressed you out. <laughs> because I need y'all to physically hear me out. That how you feel is really going to show in your body if it manifests enough. There are so many people walking around right now in 2024 where they always say when you ask them how they're doing, they're tired. Do you know it's possible to get more than your daily recommended hours of sleep and still be tired because it's not your body that's tired. Maybe it's your emotions that are tired, your mind that's tired, your spirit that you don't feed at all or rest in, in God that is tired. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I personally have had to learn the hard way is that when you keep ignoring your mind and your overthinking and your overprocessing, and when you ignore the sacred time in your prayer closet with the Most High, the enemy is going to run rampant. He has you right where he wants you. This is why, in order for you to establish equally yoked friendships where there's no dead weight and you feel free, you feel like you have an abundant life, that you don't carry any dead weight. It's not with your strength. You have help, ever present help that comes only from the Most High a higher source than you because it all really comes in a ladder where your spirit is the highest self. But when dead weight and unequally yoked relationships drag you down to this physical plane and continue to drag you down to what feels like you're going towards a personal hell, you need to reach out your hand and stretch out towards that ladder. Pinpoint what your destination, what your goals are supposed to look and feel like, and continue to surround yourself in not only like-minded people so that you will be equally yoked and happier in your life, but understand that the bars in your ladder aren't just from those around you physically that support you. It comes from the most high who has your step every way. As long as you take it one at a time, take it one day at a time. It is not fair. Whoever is listening to this, it is not fair that people have come to you, have gaslit you, have been narcissistic towards you, have been manipulating you, 
have been breadcrumbing you into thinking things may get better, but will never, and that things will have a chance to change, but will never. It is not fair for you to keep going through this revolving door with no end in sight. The only way it is going to stop is if you say so. God can give you all the tools you need right in front of you. But if you don't know what to look for, if you don't know how the Most High speaks to you, the people he may use, the content he may use, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities to make sure you're okay before everybody else. And I'm speaking from a place of where I've already been and where I am blossoming out of. I'm not just talking just because I can. This is more, <clears throat> this is the main reason why I don't do this for money, for views. I'm doing this because I'm seeing a pattern that I really want to break. Especially for those who are millennial and Gen Z. There is still hope for you. You know why there's still hope for you? Let me tell you why there's still hope for you. Aside from the message of the manual, the book that gives you all your prescriptions to any emotion that you're feeling that's negative and how to make it positive, let me tell you something. You really want to identify and prove if whatever relationship type you're in right now is equally yoked and that you're not carrying dead weight. Okay. In my personal opinion, what is one track's dead giveaway that someone may be dead weight? If a person can grow off of the knowledge of raw honesty from not just their perspective, but different perspectives without avoiding you, dodging you, or deflecting, they're more than likely not dead weight. If you can legit show somebody that is unaware of their patterns, their thought process, how they speak to people, how they act to people, and they can take accountability for what they've said or done or how they act, that person may not be dead weight. They're doing what most people are unable to do. They are part of an elite class in society that is unspoken of. And if there's anything I can leave you with on top of everything else I have said in this content today, here it is. Growth is key. When it comes to equally yoked relationships of any kind, anything that stops growing dies. If you're not growing together as a friend, as a romantic partner, as a coworker or a business partner, if you're not growing together, you're growing apart. And if both of you do not have the desire to go back to a place where you can actually meet and work on certain things that are not working out. If, if this harness here, if this yoke here is not allowing you to both walk together with balance, with teamwork, with reciprocity, with synchronicity, something is wrong. If you and your friend, if you and your husband, if you and your wife, if you and your girlfriend, if you and your boyfriend, if you and your coworker are not growing together, if you're not moving together, 
you are carrying dead weight. You see them? You see this brown ox? You see this white and black one? If this white and black one is not moving at the same rate and the same effort as Mr. Brown over here, guess what? Homie might choke and die. Then Brown is carrying dead weight. Do you see the picture here? And to Anonymous, who has written in and sent that video to me, thank you. Because now I feel inspired to start a cassette tape side A for the women and cassette tape side B for the men, speaking about certain things to look out for on all aspects when it comes to being equally yoked and when it also comes to relationships as far as romance and certain things to look out for, especially things like soul ties. We're going to speak about it, okay? You going to give me some time? It might be on Wednesday, might not be, but I'm going to let y'all know. Because this is serious business. The devil been tap dancing in too many people's lives. Over here tormenting and breaking up families. Disturbing the peace. Giving a false sense of peace. And then having you pay for it later while he leaves and laughs. And I'm sick of it. How many more times do we have to feel like we settle for less and get less? When in the meantime, all we were doing was trying to make ourselves more appeasable to the person or the people we were most interested in having these platonic or romantic relationships with. At this point, to suffer is a choice. And if you need help to get out of it, I understand completely. I'm not here to judge anyone's circumstance right now, but I am here to tell you there is always hope as long as you are six feet above ground, you are able to place both feet on the ground and have air in your lungs. Even if you weren't able to place both feet on the ground, if you have air in your lungs, if you can blink your eyes, you are blessed more than most people who didn't wake up this morning and who didn't get another chance to make things right or change their circumstance and didn't have the resources. My name is Shayna. This is One Track Record. And I will be back with y'all later this week. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. And I hope you got something out of this. Share if you care. Don't be shy. Don't, don't be gatekeeping resources like this. And for anybody who wants to send me an email, go ahead and send me an email. If you'd like for it to be anonymous, just write anonymous in the subject line. My email address is one track record 123 at gmail.com. Or you can send me an anonymous DM if you'd like to in the direct message on Instagram. Just like let me know if you would like to remain anonymous or if you'd like to be known. Either way, it's fine with me. I thank you guys for sharing your time with me. I hope you continue to progress towards your goals and that you are working in your relationships that are equally yoked. You continue to grow together and leave those unequally yoked relationships, partnerships, whatever, let them just, let them die. Just don't let it be dead and strapped to you, okay? We don't need no Roman Empire punishments in 2024 when it comes to ourselves. Leave that to other people. It's not for us. It's not for the Trackstar family. But enough of my yapping. I will see you guys soon, type to you, talk to you soon. You have a blessed rest of your day. 
I'm going to go get some sleep because I have to get ready and wake up in like four hours. So (laughs) have a great rest of your day. I love you. God loves you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye, track stars.